Lead, guide us, and direct us, and may we give you the honor and glory for not only today's service, but for every day that you allow us to serve you. We thank you for uh, the, the uh, conference and for what we learned there, and we thank you for the last Emmaus walk, and we lift up the future uh, ladies' walk, and we just ask that you would be with all of those that may attend that. We just ask that you would uh, bless us through this week, especially as it's an election week. Give us your grace and your mercy. Allow us to vote as you would have us to vote and allow us to put in the leaders that you would have us to uh, put in. We thank you so much for uh, all that you give us in the right to vote. In Christ's name, amen. amen. You may be seated. So a couple of things before we uh, get into our uh, announcements. Uh, first, um, we printed up some of these Tap Methodist Church, kind of the things that we have going. We took them to conference with us, uh, and uh, with conference not uh, being a whole lot of people, we still have some left. So if you would like one of these, uh, it, there are some misspellings because I, I'm the one that did it. And uh, so please ignore the misspellings. Uh, but uh, the... the Please take one of these, and, and it has our weekly schedule. It has all the activities of the church. Uh, maybe it'll give you a way to invite somebody to church, you know, that, you know, just say, hey, we'd love to have you. And uh, so they're out on the table as you go out that this door over here. Also, the uh, we went to conference yesterday, and um, uh, Benny Tate, who is an author uh, and a pastor, of the Congregational Methodist Church in Milner, Georgia. Uh, he uh, wrote this book called Unlimited Experience in the Fullness of God's Power in Your Life, which happens to be what we're talking about in our sermons. So um, the conference uh, bought enough for every family, not every person, every family to have one. So hopefully, uh, we have enough for every family, at least that's here today. So take one per family. They're out on the table. One per family. Let me say that again. One per family. Okay? And even you visitors, feel free to grab one and uh, take one for your family. And uh, it, it, uh, it might be a good read. I haven't been able to read it yet, so I can't tell you. Uh, but it is... Um, uh, promoted by the Congregational Methodist Church, and so therefore I have faith that it is scriptural. Um, and therefore I recommend it to you. So one per family. If you're not going to read it, you're just going to throw it on the shelf and say, oh, that's great. Uh, let somebody else have your copy. You know? I know that some people are not readers. I personally am not one of those that likes to read a lot, but uh, Y'all have forced me into it to keep up with me. So um, I, I'm reading the best I can. So uh, feel free to Let me uh, give you a report on uh, conference. We did have conference the last few days, and uh, Kim and I and uh, David Turner went. And uh, there were uh, there's 26 churches in the uh, North Texas Annual Conference. Wow. 26 churches. Uh, so many of them. Uh, six of those being new. Three new last year and three new this year. So we were one of the ones last year. And this year we received a uh, church from San Angelo. Do you remember where the other two were from, Tim? I do not. Uh, and two from somewhere else. Uh, maybe maybe uh, one of those was Lone Star. Yes. Yes. Uh, but anyway, so uh, some things that you might be interested in are the uh, missions that we serve. And uh, so the missions that the North Texas Annual Conference reaches out to are as follows. Uh, first, we have Belize. And uh, Belize is uh, directed by... Uh, Charlie Joe. Joe, Charlie Joe. Lee's Mission Field. Charlie Joe and Cynthia Green. So uh, from Hattiesburg, Mississippi. And they were there, or he was there 
to uh, tell us all about his ministry, and, and he's going to do a uh, Zoom call at some point with us, uh, where he'll answer questions for us and let us know what's going on in Belize. And uh, so uh, I've invited Old Boston to come to that as well. Uh, another uh, mission that we have is the New Mexico Navajo Mission Field, headed up by Civil Vermillion. We have the Haiti Mission Field, headed up by Don and April Matt. We have the uh, Mexico Mission Field, which uh, is headed up by Asel and Hannah Fuentes, and uh, Man Manuel and Irma Munez are national missionaries there, and Fidel and Juanito Fuentes are also national uh, missionaries there, and they are from Eagle Pass, those, those last two. Um, and so uh, that that is the three missions, three or four missions there that are listed. There's one other one called the Mexico Border Radio Station uh, on the radio uh, World Radio Network, and uh, that is headed up by Florence Tingle, and uh, they're in Far Texas. So uh, that is another one that that we have opportunity for. And uh, I will, uh, there's, a, there's a photo here of the missionaries and, uh, and what we're doing. And so I will hang that on one of the bulletin boards as soon as Melanie tells me which one to hang it on. Uh, so the uh, only other thing that I would think would be of interest um, are, there are 14 churches, I think there were 15 by the time uh, they get one more check that, that I had something to do with um, that actually support and apportionments the, the, the North Texas Annual Conference. So I will give you that finance report, which is, if I can find it, as follows. Ties and offerings this year were $16,000. Delegate fees were $425. Um, and so giving them a total income of $16,425. The administrative costs for the year were $1,200. The North Texas Annual Conference, which is what we've been in the last few days, was $5,000. Super NUS, uh, I assume that's the people that we had come and speak to us, um, were $2,400. Travel was $3,000. Office was $825. And miscellaneous was four thousand. Um, out of that, David Turner was voted into the Home Mission Board, and um, uh, they are responsible for selling properties that are given to or that end up uh, being received by their conference. Uh, the conference doesn't own properties like uh, we're used to in the past, but. Um, what happens is if a church closes down or if a church uh, had property that, that after they closed down uh, and no one takes that property, no one does anything with it, it reverts back to the trustees of the conference and then they're responsible for keeping insurance on it and all those kind of things until they can uh, do away with it or you know get it going again as a church. They were able to get uh, you remember what church that was up in Bonham, I think. They had a church that had uh, almost gone down to nothing, had went three months without any reporting, and uh, so they were they stepped in, and instead of uh, instead of closing it down, they were able to use it as a new church start and get it going again. And it's it's up to sixty people, so on um, Good Sunday, so that's. Uh, that's great, you know, uh, here it was about to close, and somebody stepped in and said, I'll take it and do something with it. So that's, that's good stuff. Uh, so they're not apt to try to close churches down, but if they end up with a property like there's a gas station, a convenience store that somehow ended up left to the church, you know, and so they need to sell that, and, and it's like the roof is falling in now, and it's becoming a danger to the community. And here we are responsible for it. So um, those things need to be taken care of. And 
guess what? We have somebody on the front lines, David Turner is going to be helping them get away with that. When they said about the gas station, David Turner and the press said, and the tanks are still in the ground. So if you know anything about trying to sell a gas station, those tanks have to be out and all kind of EPA stuff done. It's, it's a mess. So I can't, uh, I, I'm glad I'm not David Turner. However, they did put me on a board. I don't know how this is going to help us, but I feel like I was in charge of it. Uh, they put me on the ministerial board, you know, that decides who can become a preacher and who can't. And uh, I thought of you, you know. And, and, and the great thing is, I was there on all these ministerial boards over the years. I had to report to them. You know, and they treated me like I was the dirt. And I can't wait to treat some of these young pastors in the same fashion that I was treated growing up. Uh, so anyway, no, that they 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 took me there. Can you imagine? What 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 greatness is God gonna do, you know? I told them I had several I've already put in the ministry. So uh, anyway, we we did uh, I think we voted in three new ministers. Uh, this season uh, to give them their license. Uh, and so I have not known what that takes. Uh, and now I'm on the board to decide what that takes. And so I will be uh, much more equipped to uh, help the guys here move into the ministry as God directs. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, Tim, anything else you can think of from the delegate side? No. No. They, they brought in some speakers, yeah. and uh, you know they they brought in theologians, you know from from Wesleyan Biblical Seminary, Wesley Biblical, whatever it is, it's Wesley Biblical Seminary. Thank you. And they use words like apologetics, hermeneutics. So we're driving to lunch, <laughs> and Tim says, David, what are we apologizing for? I was like, no, no. So that was one recommendation we're going to give to them next year is to have something for the delegates so those that don't have a mind of a theologian could understand what was being spoken and bring back a, a better report than no, I don't have anything. Um, so, uh, you know, while I was in trouble, you know, I was like this, uh, Tim was like, so, um, <laughs> He thought probably felt like it was a chalkboard, but anyway. So uh, we had a good time. Uh, Tim got to hear me snore, and only had to call me out on my driving notes. So, uh, however, he did it like 17 times in a half a second. Take it, take it, take it, take it. But we made it back home. home safe and sound. We're here. Your insurance agent is proud of you. <laughs> His faith has improved. You know, there's nothing like testing your faith by riding with the preacher. Amen. All right, let us move forward. Are there any other announcements that we need to look at this week? Yes, sir. Upward basketball ceremony tomorrow night at 6 o'clock in here. Upward basketball ceremony tomorrow night at 6 o'clock in here. Yes, youth directors and children's directors. I don't know. Yeah, Mike, Well, they used up a lot of announcement time. Can you hear me? See if I can preach. Okay, we've got a lot of dates, so we're going to be reminding you as it gets closer, but we're going to go ahead and tell you some of the upcoming things because there's a lot going on with the children and youth program this time of year. Uh, the next thing we have is use lunch. Uh, next Sunday, we're going to go to Tacos for Live after service. The pretty cool thing about Tacos for Live, every meal that's purchased there, they provide a meal for the needy or the hungry children. So we want to go support that. Uh, and then, here's that. Then the next after that is going to be uh, March 24th, which is Palm Sunday. That will be uh, our Easter family gathering the gym and outside. Uh, we're going to have uh, obstacle course, hot dogs, um, what is that, scavenger hunt, uh, in a few weeks. 
So that's March 24th. Uh, we'll have face paint, lots of things going on. We're going to do it a little bit different this year. We're going to do the scavenger, scavenger hunt instead of our egg hunt. We'll have games. And then our chocolates and coffee should be in. Uh, we turned in our order on the 22nd. Uh, it's a three-week turnaround, so we should have them before uh, Sunday after next, which is the 17th. So we should start distributing them then. I still like chocolates. I'll see how much you made. Uh, uh, if you weren't if you weren't here last Sunday, we made $1,490 off that, and uh, we really appreciate everybody's participation. Uh, April 6th, we are going to go, the youth and everyone that wants to come, and all you young children, all okay. parents, we're going to go fishing. El Meadows has opened the gates for us to come fish there. They're going to provide milk for us. We can see the head count. Uh, we'll be there probably from 8 to 12, just uh, fishing on the dock, and we'll catch what we catch for you. And that is going to be the first. So, what please come. What is that? Uh, the children, this is for youth and children, but if your children are under eight, they will need an adult with them. And we do need a head count. We need that by March 31st. We encourage you guys that don't have children, if you want to come hang out, please come hang out and get to know these kids. We need your support. Okay, VBS dates, just to save the date, those will be uh, July 21st through the 25th, and that will be in the evening again from 6 to 8. I'm excited for all that club, Bob. The camp will be in June, uh, but the younger ones will be, I believe, the third week in June, and then the older ones the fourth week in June. But I'll confirm the dates on those. I'll have that for you. We're we're not doing the egg hunt. We're going to do a scavenger hunt this year. We're going to do it a little different this year. We're going to have a scavenger hunt. Uh, they'll, they'll have some Easter items to find indoors and out there doors, and we'll have youth helpers to help the little ones on the scavenger hunt. Now, they will be getting some eggs for prizes for the games, but we won't be very many. All right. I think we're good. I like you, brother. I like you too, buddy. You're my best friend. And hey, you got five dad jokes, by the way. I know. I had a new dad joke. Why did the uh, Why did the man fall in the well? Why? Because he couldn't see that well. <laughs> All right. Let us move forward into our time of worship. Chicken spaghetti Wednesday night. <laughs>
Lord, as we come to you this morning with our hearts heavy with grief, mourning for the family of Kyle Kamishowski and all of folk for the Eduardo Mendez family, Lord, that you would give their families comfort and peace in their time of need. Lord, that sometimes in these losses that take us by surprise that hurt us the most, when we as Christians ask ourselves what could we have done to, to reach out to them and to make sure that this type of thing didn't happen, Lord, but, but we'd ask that uh, in this family's time of uncertainty that you would wrap them in your loving arms and grant them peace in their time of need. And Lord, as we've got members of our communities that are dealing with cancer and, and going through radiation and chemotherapy, we'd ask that you would give their doctors and their nurses that attend to, to this disease guidance that they can uh, treat their patients with the utmost care, that, that they can extend their lives and give them peace here on earth. And Lord, we're thankful for this community of saints that comes together to lift up the concerns of this community and to be a beacon to those young people in this community, that they got some hope and they've got a place to turn and they do have a purpose in God's kingdom. And Lord, we'd ask that we continue to pray for the Congregational Methodist Church that they will continue to be a, a haven of truth for those that are looking to, to find truth and balance in their lives. We'd ask that you bless our mission work in this community and, and worldwide, Lord, as we seek to win hearts for you. Lord, give us a purpose. Give us a mission. And let us get behind it wholeheartedly, Lord, with the, with the fervor of John the Baptist, that he knew his purpose in life, that he knew what you had intended for him to do, to, to pave the way for for those that would follow Jesus Christ. And Lord, let others see Jesus Christ in us, in our daily lives, in our workday worlds, and in each and everything that we do outside of this church. Lord, Lord, we'd ask that you allow others to see Christ at work in us. And Lord, we're thankful for this group of believers that give so hard, wholeheartedly of themselves to the work that's going on here at church. And Lord, we're thankful for the recognition that Margie Manning received for her efforts of humanitarian toward this community, and that she's a great ambassador for Christ for the Catholic Methodist Church. Lord, continue to bless each and every endeavor that we undertake. We'll ask all these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And that is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Hence the word electric, right? Electronics. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, do you ever use an extension cord? Yes. What does it do? Um, it helps you plug in things. Helps you plug in things. Into what? And, and to electricity, right? And the electricity gives us what? What else? What does it happen when it? Yeah, but what is that? What is the Well, it's lightning, but what do we call it? Is it called power? Wow. Did you know that? Yes. Yes, really soon. I'm going to break it. All right. So, Jesus wants us to be plugged into him. Did you know that? And the way that we do that is in John chapter 15. It says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that bears no fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, in other words, every branch that is plugged in, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. Did you know that the bigger your cord is, electric cord, the more power you can produce? He did. So the bigger our faith is plugged into Jesus, the more power he can do for us and the more fruit we will grow, right? Right? Let's thank God for his power. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your power. We thank you that we can plug into it. And we thank you for our children and what they mean to us. Watch over them and keep them. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Y'all follow up this code. Don't forget your comments. Because I'll leave them if you leave them. Uh, you didn't like my joke earlier? The man that fell in the well, he didn't see that well. That was the joke. That was it. Better go catch Miss Kayla. I'll get you another one later. What about the joke? Can't win. You know, tough crowd.
that scripture in Romans 1, 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. First to the Jew, then to the Gentile. It's the word of God for the people of God. Yes, you may be seated.
started with in the last two sermons that I've done. And then we end up today with the, uh, with the final uh, sermon of this series. But I want to kind of uh, go back over some of the things that you learned. And my problem with that is, I don't know what I did with my notes. There they are. So this is the summary of all that. Aren't you glad? So if you remember, we were entered into a Lenten season, correct? Everybody got your cross, sackcloth. I didn't give you sackcloth. But we understand that we're in a time that we need healing, right? We're in a time that we examine our lives and decide what is it that we need to remove that stands between us and our relationship with God, or what is it that we need to take on to improve that relationship. And that's where we are as Methodist Christians in this time of Lent. Guess what? This is the most scriptural thing you will ever do, is examine yourself before the Lord. The Old Testament called testing yourself by the purification of gold and silver, right? By the flame. Remove the impurities and become pure before our God. If you remember a few weeks back, we talked about the first thing that we need to do to receive this healing is to tap into the power of God. As Christians, you have been given the authority to overcome the evils of this world by the authority of God through Jesus Christ and His power. We tap into that power, if you remember, by faith. Anointing. Very good. And prayer. Thank you. Faith, anointing, and prayer. Right? How do we get to faith? Through repentance. Right? How do we get to anointing? By coming into the body of Christ. And how do we pray? What was it? Daily. Daily, moment to moment. Now, then, the, then we talked about when God releases us. We talked about being an active Christian versus being a reactive Christian, right? And an active Christian is one that does what? Praise. Does all the things that we're supposed to do in a relationship. Before, how many of you, oh, your wife only talks to you when it's time to take the trash out? Okay. How many of you, the only time your wife talks to you is when she needs something? Well, y'all got some good wives. I'm going to tell you right now. Amen. Amen. All right. How many of you, your husband only talks to you when he needs something? Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. You got one honest person here. All right. Not much of a relationship if the only time we talk to each other is when we need something. That's kind of like a 911 relationship. If something goes wrong, hey, where you at? I need some help. Hey, where you at? I need some help. If we had that relationship with God, he may get a little frustrated with us, huh? If the only time I'm praying to God is when, oh Lord, somebody just pulled out in front of me, please help me. Or please help them. That's being a nine must being reactive, right? You're being reactive to the situation. Now, there's times that we need to be reactive to God. I understand. There's times that you're going to call on your family for help. There's times you're going to call on your spouse for help. There's times that your spouse or your family is going to call on you for help. And they move in with you. Now, I mean, those kind of things happen, right? But if that's the only time they talk to you, that's not much of a relationship. So we need an active relationship with God first. And that's what we talked about the last time I spoke. Today, we're going to talk about when God's power is applied. Now, I had some really great scriptures. 
And then Trisha gave me some better scriptures this morning uh, in Sunday school. And so uh, I'm going to I'm going to use them, Trisha, uh, because you gave them to me. And um, now the first one was that in Romans one sixteen. Well, that salvation was brought, right? For I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is what? The power of God that does what? Brings salvation. Folks, God's power brings salvation to your life. It brings hope to your life. It brings a future to your life. It brings something that is for your good, as Jeremiah 29 says, and not for your bad. It is something that brings you out of the bad times and into a time of sustaining. Now, you say, well, that means I'm going to always have good times. No. In this life, you will have trials, troubles, struggles. In this world, you will have sorrow and struggles, but do not fear for what? God's power in Jesus Christ has overcome the world. Guess what? Just like I told the kids a while ago, you are plugged in to that power when you become a Christian that has repented and believed in the name of Jesus Christ. He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Folks, when God's power came back, it defeated sin and death. But you must receive it. So, uh, thanks to Tricia, I'm going to turn to Ephesians. And we'll come back to those scriptures I gave you. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 1, starting in verse... Uh, Seven, uh, let's, let's go to 18. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope. Eyes open so that you will know hope. Right? To which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people. <laughs> the riches of God in his holy people. Tim called me perfect the other day. <laughs> and, and I said, yes, I am. And fearfully and wonderfully made even. And he was like, wasn't talking to you. You know, must have been his wife he was talking about. I don't know. I was like, perfect, yes, yes I am, thank you. Glorious inheritance in his holy people and his incomparably great power. Did you hear that? Where did we just learn that the power of God comes from? It comes from the gospel, which is Jesus Christ coming in given us defeating sin and death. And God's power, his great, incomparable power for us who believe that power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Now folks, I don't know if you remember the story, but God's power was so powerful that when he raised Jesus Christ, other people got up and walked around. Other dead people. Now, I don't know what happened to them. Maybe they went back to sleep. I don't know. But they got up and walked around too. Now, that's the power. Far above all rule and authority, power and dominion. What? The world doesn't have power over me or dominion over me? And every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. So that means that nothing that is to come, nothing that has come 
since we've been born. Do you know how much stuff has changed since you and I have been alive? A lot. I wrote it down the other day. I, I wrote all kinds of stuff that we've gone through that have changed, the things that have changed. You know one thing that has not changed? God. God's Word. Jesus says, I am saying today, tomorrow, and forever, right? And God placed all things, oh wait, oh wait, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything. So Jesus is head over everything for the church. You remember what Jesus said about we always try to say, well, that's Old Testament. That's Old Testament. What did Jesus say about the Old Testament law? He said, I didn't come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill it. Fulfill it. Does that mean we're still under the law? Right? And, and he, he even took it to that extra level, if you'll remember. He said, look, I don't even want you killing somebody, but even if you think it, you've done it. Ooh, Lord. Please forgive me. I didn't mean to think that person did. You know? Jesus said, man, I'm going to take it to the next level. You don't even think it. You don't even think about doing it. You move away from that. You don't live in the flesh. You live in the spirit. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Folks, are you feel like your life's missing something? feel like something's a little out of place. You feel like other Christians don't seem to get it. You feel like your family is not getting it. I, I felt that yesterday. My daughter is being much with my daughter and her boyfriend. You know, I'm trying to get them back in church. You know, I feel like they're not getting it. You know, just want to sleep them. Don't you understand? God's coming back. saving grace on her. <coughs> if you raise them up in the way they should go, they will not depart from their own. Now that's a paraphrase. I can't wait till she gets old. <laughs> Boy, am I going to give it to her then. And she's got to buy my nursing home. As for you who were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live, when you follow the ways of the world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient, all of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. Folks, we deserve wrath. God gave us love. We deserved uh, an authority of, of punishment. God gave us Jesus Christ and delivered us from that. Yesterday, or last few days at conference, they, they said the way we test our faith, right? The way we test whether the church is doing what it should be doing is you go all the way back to the apostles and then you go from the apostles to Jesus Christ. And if they were doing it, we ought to be doing it. If they were living that way, we ought to be living that way. Right? And so it, it's hard for us sometimes because we get, lost, we get lost in the traditions of things. We get lost in the, the uh, well, the feelings. I feel like we ought to be doing it this way instead of I believe we ought to do it this way. And we get lost in that, and we think, well, it's okay as long as they feel like that's where they need to be. No! Be scriptural. Did the apostles do it? 
Did Jesus do it? You don't remember he, how he talked to the church? That's apologetics, by the way, if you want to understand what apologetics were. It's everything Jesus said to the Pharisees and scribes. He was defending who he was according to their scripture. That's apologetics. When you defend your faith, that's apologetics. Okay? But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. By what? Grace. So it's not anything we did. I mean, we're called to live a certain way, but isn't that, you know, even living the best life you could live is not good enough to give you grace except for God gives it to us through Jesus Christ. You can only accept it. However, does that give you the right to go live like heathen? You. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages he might show incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. Remember what I said a while ago? Gotta have faith. You know, there used to be a song, George Michael. Gotta have faith, faith, faith. Okay. Some of you aren't that old. Some of you are too old. Gotta have faith. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is a gift, it is the gift of God, not by works, so no one can boast, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now, the last two weeks, or the last two times I've preached, I've given you all a list of things that God's power has done. So I'm going to give you that list today, and we're going to close with this. Here's the list. If I can find it. All right. The first thing that it does, Romans 1, 18 through 25, if you're taking notes, it destroys excuses. It takes excuses away from us. The power of God removes all excuses. Okay? We receive it by grace. We walk in the grace, the faith, the anointing of God. And we communicate with God through the Holy Spirit by our prayer. So we stay active in that and not reactive. Reactive is available to us because we are active in the relationship. And then we see God's power acting. Folks, God's power acts when we see it remove the excuses that hinders our relationship with not only God, but with other people. See, sometimes, folks, our excuses are, well, they just didn't know any better. Then why didn't you teach them? Isn't it our job as Christians to teach the gospel? Isn't it our job as Christians to teach a better way of living? You see, God accepts us where we are, but it didn't leave us there. God takes us full of sin and removes that blemish from us and cleans us up and makes us in his perfection, but he doesn't leave you in the muck. If he left you in the muck, he didn't accept you. Ooh. Stepping on my toes now for a minute. Second thing it does, it creates hope. Matthew 19, 26. Oh, you want to read that scripture? The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all the godlessness and wickedness of people who support the truth by their wickedness or suppress the truth by their wickedness since what may be known about God is according to them because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that people are without excuse. 
Well, God accepts me the way I am. Yes, he does. But he won't leave me there. He didn't leave me there. Boy, I'm glad he accepted me, but I'm really, really glad he didn't leave me. Yeah? Because if he left me there, I'd be dead. Know that. All right. Creates hope. How many of you need hope? Boy, I need hope. Matthew 19, 26. Jesus looked at them and said, With man this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Folks, so I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. God, all things are possible. I don't know how I'm going to do this. God, all things are possible. I was talking to a friend of mine this week. He uh, was doing a, uh, a, a food pantry. He's, a, a, he's one of my preacher boys. Of course, he's older than me, but he is one of my preacher boys. And uh, he's covering a church down in Florida, Texas. And uh, he was telling all of me, he said, man, we need to honor it down here. We, we need to get out from under. We get to deliver the food and the rain. So he calls me, he's telling me the story. And I'm like, yeah, what well, happened? He said, well, I told them that we needed an honor. They said, we don't have the money for that. I said, I understand that. He said, I do too. So I went home and I prayed about it. I said, you did? What happened? He said, I prayed and made a phone call. Yeah. He said, the first two phone calls failed, but the third one, the guy offered me a 40 by 20 or something on it. He said, all, all I got to do is let him advertise his owning business on there. And he's from a Baptist church down in Woodland. I said, really? He said, yeah, but the problem is I called the people and they said, how did you do that? What if he wants to advertise something else? What if this and what if that? Are you kidding me? God just gave you an army and you're going to say, well, what if? That sounds like the children of Israel, don't it? Mm -hmm. What if them giants step on us? You know? Power of God. With God, all things are possible. All right, number three, develops confidence. He had the confidence to call. He had the confidence to believe in God. Jeremiah 32, 17. An awe sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and earth by your great power and outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. And if all things are possible for him, then they're possible for us. Affirms that God is divine, his divinity. Uh, Isaiah 46, 8 through 11. Don't have that one. There it is. Remember this. Keep it in mind. Take it to heart. You rebels. Remember the former things, those of long ago. I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is none like me. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, but it's still to come. I say my purpose will stand and I will do all that I please. From the east, I summon a bird of prey from a far off land, a man to fulfill my purpose. What I have said, that I will bring about. What I have planned, that will I do. God is God is God. There is no other. He does what he wants. And we're to be obedient to him. You know, uh, one of the thoughts that I had to do a sermon at some point down the road about it. But a lot of times, we as Christians try to put God in our boundaries. When it's supposed to be the other way around. We're supposed to be His with His boundaries, not the other way around. Fifth, it produces assurance. Ephesians 3, 20-21. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that it is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. You can be sure that when you're working in God's power, the assurance of everything you need is available to you, and everything that God wants done is going to be done. 
if I hadn't answered the call, which I took a while, but I'm sure that God had to use somebody else to do the years that I was running. Because his plan is going to be fulfilled whether I do it or whether Carrie does it. And I've seen him move people out of the way because they wouldn't be obedient and use somebody else. I don't want to get caught in that web again. <coughs> Finally, it celebrates weakness. But without God, we're nothing. Without God, we're weak. Without God, we're weak-minded. Without God, we struggle worse than we should. Without the body of Christ supporting one another, we struggle more than we should. Folks, we need each other in the body of Christ. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in what? Weakness. You know, you're going to feel at times, I just can't handle this. I just don't know what to do. I just don't know what's happening to me. I just don't know why my community's doing this. I don't understand why the world's doing this. I don't understand why all these things seem to be going crazy. God's grace and power is not only sufficient, but made perfect in our weakness. God wants to prove that he can do things not because of you, but in spite of you. In spite of us. Now I think about the baptisms we've had this year. That was in spite of us. It wasn't because of us. God had a relationship he wanted to start with those people. And in spite of us, God sent them here. You know, sometimes the church has to be a hospital, right? Right? We're all emotionally sick, we're all spiritually sick, and we come in here and oh, we got help. I need a prescription. Give me some of God's work. Right? Fill me up. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power rest on me. That is why for Christ's sake I delight in weakness and in insults and in hardships and in persecutions and difficulties for when I am weak then because of God I am strong. Is God's holiness resting on you? Is the love of Jesus Christ being revealed to you? Are you revealing the love of Christ to others? Is God telling you, I'm still looking for that relationship with you through prayer, through anointing, through your faith?
children's program taken off like it is. Uh, it seems that our adults need to make a few friends. Um, but uh, I'm glad you got it. Um, but uh, you know, we 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 are we are moving in proper direction. So let us uh, let us really step up for this family. Um, you know, she was going to try to pay us um, for the use of this facility on Saturday for her for his memorial service, and I told her I said. We, we don't need that. And she said, but I want to. And, and I've been given, I was like, you don't understand what's coming. You're gonna be in a position where you're gonna need that. And we, we want you to keep that. And so, uh, anyway, if you if you would, would put them on your prayer list, and, and uh, I know what it's like to lose a dad at a young age, because uh, it happened to me, and, and so uh, just, just remember these two kids for sure in the life and family, of course, but there is it really, sister. I'm sorry? There are more kids. There's more kids, yes, there are. Uh, we have two of them, that's yeah, we uh, our, 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 but yes, there are more at that home, and uh, so remember these children. Right? Uh, uh, we get to love on two of them, you know, until the others come. All right. Sorry? I tell you what, Tim, I'll just shoot from the hip if you're all right with that. This is almost me. <laughs> Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and before one another. Merciful God, God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread. And he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which has been broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to God. He gave it to his disciples and he said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. Pour it out for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins. It is in remembrance of these mighty acts that we praise God. We offer thanksgiving. And we receive his body, his blood, so that we might be in communion with him, carrying his life not only from here, but through us to the world. So you come as the usher.
So I was asked, why I don't give out the crust? So here's a teaching moment for you. I'm sure there are some pastors who give every piece of the bread. For me, I like that we're reminded that if we are still one love. And so I try not to give the crust of the bread because I want to be remembrance that we are one body. And that Christ remains even after we have received all of them. And therefore, there is room for more. And that is why I tend not to be a crust and bread of the body of Christ. So, There is much during the day that clamors for our attention. Friends, family, work, classes, household tasks, and the noise. We are bombarded with sound from the clock that awakens us to the radio, the telephone, the radio, the television, the conversation that we have, uh, have or overhear. Where is the time and place to listen for the still and small voice of God? Sometimes it seems that God would have to speak in a whirlwind to be heard above the clamor. Listen now. There is a place of quiet rest, and it is a place where God dwells within you. Close your eyes. Be aware of the place. In Lent, we journey to the parts of ourselves known only to God, beneath the clamor. Let the story of Jesus reach us there. Let it teach us wisdom in our secret hearts. As we extinguish this light, we acknowledge the darkness and pain and violence in the world and to the earth. Lord, we ask that you would draw us together in your love. May our restless hearts not resist you, but continue to search until they find their rest in you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's stand and have our Today, if you need to make a decision in accepting Christ, joining with the body of Christ, whatever you need, if you just need some more prayer, you come as we sing verse 24 of In the Cross of Christ, I glory.